Captain America. God's righteous man. <laughs> Pretending you could even live without a war. I can't actually throw up in my mouth, but if I could... Welcome to Eat Sleep Nerd, a podcast where you can check out, go AFK, and relax with us as we discuss all things nerds. Comic books, video games, movies, TV shows, and anything else that gets geeks more worked up than Tony Stark when he realizes he created most of his villains. Welcome to episode number 18. I'm Corey Winter, and as always, I am joined by my nerdy brother, Josh Winter, and our geeky friend, Jason Summer. In this episode... You know how we're going to be talking about that part three of our Peak Geek debate? Well, we're printing off one more week because instead, we're going to be doing a geek dive into the bombshell news that Warner Brothers has canceled the Batgirl movie. We'll also be doing a quick dive through the week's other news. And before we get into this show, please stop what you were doing. Go share us with at least one friend. One friend. That's and your assignment. That is your assignment. <laughs> First, you have been tasked. <laughs> go find a friend. Oh. oh, they have friends. I don't know. They have we, us. If, if there is that. There is that. But don't share it with you us because we know about the show already. We've already shared. Go find someone else. Yeah, <laughs> you can't. Yeah, it can't be us because we already know. Yeah, it's... All we're looking for is participation in our pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> find two friends. That's... Tell them to find two friends and see how far it can go. Well, go do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, Jason, Josh, how you doing? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. I'm doing good. Like, like, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks I've been pretty darn sick, and I've been feeling amazing, comparatively speaking. So yeah, you finally you sound you finally don't sound sick. Yeah. <laughs> Although it still sounds like you're calling in via satellite. <laughs> wow, well, it's because I am. <laughs> so yes, yeah, still listeners, on, still on the iPhone. Yeah. Yet again, we're having some technical issues on Jason's end. We'll figure it out at some point, but he's he's calling in from his phone, which is fine. You sound great. Yeah, you sound yeah. lovely. Nice to have you here, Jason. Yeah, well, it's lovely to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, <laughs> you know, this is my first stop on my tour. Oh, and okay. uh, you know, it's really important that uh, it, you know I I get the word out there about this um, podcast that we're on. It so, does sound yeah. like you're one of those radio show guests that calls in from like <laughs> the car. So that's fine. <laughs> uh, anyway. I'm, I'm on my way to JFK right now. <laughs> uh, You've only got 10 minutes and you can only talk to him about X, Y, and Z. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. My agent said. Oh, okay. Uh, so what are you guys doing this week? I started um, a new video game. Ooh. Okay. So you, okay. So you, you moved on from horizon. You gave up on cyberpunk. What do you want now? I am now on because I didn't like the cyberpunk and I stopped mm -hmm. it. So, mm -hmm. and, and we also determined that I could not get a refund but <laughs> in any case. Correct. So a little, you know, salty about that. I started playing outer wilds. Yes. I've heard very good th things about that game. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hold your hand while you, while you start the game. Like you really kind of have to figure out what's going on on your own. And I'm, I like it. It's it's kind of a it has an open world feel. You can do whatever you want. You know, I mean, there's still like some, a construct of what they do want you to do, mm -hmm. but it, there's no real um, solid direction on what you need to do. You kind of have to figure it out. And I like it. No, it sounds too much like real life. Yeah, it won lots of Game of the Year awards. Like when it came out, I think it was back in like 2019. Uh, it was very highly regarded. What's the gameplay like? It's open world and RPG. RPG. Is, so that's probably yeah. why I haven't played so it. So it's a role playing game. The most interesting part of it is that the the world is it's a small world, probably about the size of our moon, and it's a it's a community or people that is still I would say I don't know I would I would say like eighteen hundreds early nineteen hundreds, hmm. but somehow they've developed space travel. Using wood construction, <laughs> just accidentally <laughs> to respect. Yeah, accidentally discovered space travel by playing with wood. Okay, so they have uh, a yeah. version <laughs> space program while they also live in small tribal communities. <laughs> it's a really interesting feel. I think that's what Musk said. Uh, living on Mars is going to be like. 
that exact situation. It's going to be a burgeoning community and a burgeoning space program. Yes. Well, that sounds fun. Um, I will not play that, but I'm glad you're enjoying that. (laughs) Um, So before we get into our our Geek Dive news stuff, I want to talk about the fantastic goldmine of a movie idea I came up with on accident. Ooh. So oh, is this it the is Chris? the Chris thing. So I even <laughs> I even have a name for it, but I'm gonna say that to the end. So you know there's the whole Chris actor thing in Hollywood where you have like the big four Chris's, Chris Pratt, Chris Evans, Chris Pine, and Chris Hemsworth. Like get the the Chris's. Proud of you for getting those off. Yeah. Like that. So go ahead. They haven't really done a movie together. Like we've obviously had three of the Chris's all in in the MC MCU and we have Chris Evans or no, I'm sorry, uh, Chris Pine over in, in DC land, but we've not gotten them all together yet. And so I'm thinking we need to have like this big mashup of all of the big Chris's come together for like this big action movie. And I have an entire plot planned out. So it's going to be kind of like a bodyguard military protection type of story where Chris Pratt, Chris Evans, Chris Pine, and Chris Hemsworth all play bodyguards. <laughs> uh, and they kind of all get assigned mistakenly to uh, protect Chris Rock. And all these four Chris's protecting Chris Rock, they're all kind of like, oh, I'm used to being the leader. I don't know how to like work with other people that are also leaders. And so the entire movie is them like, doing back and forths. I don't know how to lead. I don't know how to take orders and stuff. And so they're protecting Chris Rock, who is the target of an assassination attempt by villain Christoph Waltz. Another Chris. Nice. <laughs> the team of Chris's butt heads throughout the entire movie because all four of them are used to being the leader. So boss man Christopher Walken <laughs> has to deal with the headache of a broken team throughout the entire movie. Halfway through the movie, the team comes across the wise man Christopher Lloyd to help them work together. Mm. And Christoph Waltz's assassin team is made up of <laughs> Christian Bale, Christopher Maloney, Christian Slater, and Chris O'Donnell. <laughs> this this would be pretty. This would be amazing, right? So the name of right. it, the name of it, Crisscross. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> oh, it is... would be the highest grossing action dramedy of all time. And it's a uh, it's clearly what has to happen to get Chris O'Donnell an acting gig these days. Oh, no, he's, no, he's been in um, NCIS forever, hasn't he? It's not I still said going. an acting gig. Oh, <laughs> said an acting gig. Yikes. But anyway, I think it's a billion dollar idea. It, it would also cost a billion dollars. I, believe. I, think, I think Amazon should do it. Um, <laughs> make it happen, Amazon. I kind of forgot that that little segue music was kind of a ripoff of EDC theme song. So that's actually just perfect. So breaking news this week and the fact that Warner Brothers Discovery has canceled the upcoming Batgirl movie. News broke last Tuesday that Warner Brothers has canceled Batgirl. So this was an upcoming HBO Max movie and they had been toying with the idea of maybe releasing it theatrically. The budget for this movie is actually the mind-boggling thing. It had it had ballooned to almost a $100 million budget to make this movie. It had already gotten an initial cut. So, like, they actually had done test screenings of this movie. They had done reshoots of this movie. It's like they had invested a lot of time, and energy, and effort into this movie. Just for Warner Brothers to shelve it completely. They have no plans to release it theatrically or on HBO Max. And so that was the big breaking news on Tuesday. Nobody wanted to believe it, but it is in fact true. So before we even get into all this thing, like the news of this, the story has developed over this past week since Tuesday night. So actually, I want to go just in timeline order to kind of like cover everything that's happened. So what were your initial thoughts, guys? Uh, my first thought was it's done. Like that's, that's been, I mean, I'm sure there's some post work that had to be done on it, but like the whole thing was, it's a completed project. Yeah. So I, I, 
I, I've read, you know, a bunch of the other reports that talks about how because of the way weird Hollywood tax things work, they can actually save money by not releasing it. I, I still just don't get it. Like it's done. It's done. Yes. Yeah, so reports came out the next morning that Warner Brothers Discovery will save approximately 15 to $20 million from canceling it because they plan to write it off for tax reasons. And so basically when they write it off for tax reasons, um, it's kind of like that whole fr- the producers thing. Um, right. You, you make more ever, money with a flop than with a hit. Yeah. Cause basically you don't have money to pay back the backers or whatever. It's kind of like the same idea. If they write it off for we tax reasons, it. it means they can't publish it anywhere publicly to where it can make money. So if they try to make money off of it, they can't write it off for tax reasons. So they figured because it's not a quality that's going to be good enough for a theatrical release and they're not going to make any additional money off of it from an HBO Max release, they actually figure they can make more money off of it by just writing it off in taxes. Despite the fact that they had already spent almost $100 million making this movie. Well, here's the important thing to remember. They didn't spend that. Warner Brothers spent that. Yeah. Like that's that. I mean, that's the part that everyone seems to be leaving off of this is that that I mean, Discovery is essentially in charge. Like it's the second part of the name, Warner Brothers Discovery. But Discovery is now the principal owner of Warner Brothers, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And so so, yeah, I'm sure the first thing the accountants looked at was, okay, well, we didn't really spend this money, but anything else we have to do to get it done is going to come from us. Yeah. So eh, from, from the, again, I try to look at it from a business standpoint. So, I mean, I, I get it, but to me, I just keep coming back to it's done. So to clarify, it came out that it was not exactly done. Like there were still visual effects that had to be added, like a considerable amount of visual effects that had to still be done, but it was complete enough to where it was doing test screenings. And they were not good. The the reviews are coming so, in as poor. Good were they not? segue. So uh, yes. throughout the week, uh, reports from industry insiders, like people that were familiar with the production and everything. Since the movie's canceled now, like there's no NDA or anything, like they can talk about it freely now. So reports were saying that basically it was not scoring amazingly in test screenings. However, it was scoring comparably to the upcoming Shazam movie. So it was actually scoring in the 60s, huh. which is actually pretty high for an initial test screenings where the visual effects is not done. It's so oh, like 60s right. for a first test screening. Not bad at all. Not terrible. And yeah. it's also come out just today, like as of this recording, we're recording on Saturday after this news all broke. Um, it came out today that it was actually scoring the exact same as Black Adam before Black Adam went through reshoots. So Black oh. Adam's original test screenings were scoring the exact same as Batgirl's original test, test screenings. Interesting. It's worth noting, though, that Black Adam got that score and they said we need to refilm. Yeah. Discovery's whole thing is they didn't want to put more money into it. It's also worth noting that so. it was with unfinished effects and it was only tested once. They did not give it a second try. They said, oh, hmm. it didn't score well on this first test. That's not good enough. Cancel it. So, so what were they, did we know why they said they didn't like it? Uh, WB came out with a statement. Um, this is actually prior to their investor call that they had, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. So the initial re- statement that WB came out with is, and I quote, the decision to not release Batgirl reflects our leadership's strategic shift as it relates to the DC universe and HBO Max. Leslie Grace, uh, the actor playing Batgirl, is an incredibly talented actor. This decision is not a reflection of her performance. We are incredibly grateful to the filmmakers of Batgirl and Scoob Holiday Hunt, which is actually another one of the movies that they canceled despite it being finished, mm-hmm. and <laughs> their respective casts, and we hope to collaborate with everyone again in the near future. Mm-hmm. So that's all WB said publicly. Um, some insider reports were saying that WB was just not happy with the quality of the film. They thought it was cheap and not well put together, which is not what the test screenings were saying. Hmm. Now, Batgirl is the, the we'll say, the, the tentpole for this circus of disappointment. Disappointment. Yeah, cir- circus of disappointment. Of Cirque what's going do on disappoint with, of with Warner Brothers Discovery, 
but there are there are several other projects that are being affected uh, by these sweeping changes made by by the Discovery team. Uh, of course, Batgirl's gone. Uh, there was a Wonder Twins movie that was going to come out. I'm okay for that one to knock out. Uh, yeah, that, they never were important characters to me. They're kind of <laughs> weird. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, that's been pushed back to 2023. J.J. Uh, Abrams' Justice League Dark Universe, whether or not they're, they're going to continue with that, is now up in the air. Uh, a Superman reboot, a Green Lantern series, uh, Legends of Tomorrow, and Batman. It, they were just, it's just affected all of these DC properties. So who knows what's going to happen on the, on the horizon with, uh, with DC. I do. Now, didn't you do? I do. Okay. Who's I talking? do. I know. Is it's it speculation? Happen. Uh, I mean, it is, but I have a tendency to be right. Hashtag Josh was right. Okay. Um, so, oh, yeah. Okay. So, so no, I mean, it's, it's Warner Brothers knew they were going to sell out for a long time. Like, Obviously, you know, it's not something you just call up one day and you're just like, hey, you want to buy my company? It's a, it's a major motion picture studio. So I don't know. I feel like over the past two or three years, a lot of projects have been announced for the DC film universe. And then you never really heard anything else about them again, you know, other than, yeah, we're still doing it. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, we're doing. So I kind of wonder if it was almost just a PR thing. Like just we're gonna make people happy. Yeah, this is coming. This is coming. This is go- oh, never mind. We we sold. Sorry, that's their problem. Well, okay. So a little bit of insight into that. So obviously, after this big news broke, people that are working on active DC projects wanted to come out and clarify that their projects are actually still in production as of this writing, as of this recording. Obviously, mm-hmm. that could change with the way Warner Brothers is handling things nowadays. But I was gonna say a, w- a week ago, Batgirl was coming out. Yeah. Um, But at the moment, uh, the big one that's probably safe, despite the fact that HBO Max is going through this whole change as well, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, The big one that's probably safe is James Gunn's Peacemaker series. That one's obviously a huge shit. They'll probably keep making that one. But he says at the moment, Peacemaker is safe. Um, The Green Lantern TV show at the moment is still greenlit. That one's still happening. (laughs) I like that. Nice. Green Uh, Lantern is greenlit. Yeah, that's cute. The Blue Beetle movie, which I feel like most people kind of forgot about, is actually still happening at the moment. Um, it has gone through filming and everything. I was going to say, I feel like I saw production stills of that a little while back. And then obviously the big ones that are kind of like outside of the DCEU, uh, obviously the Batman 2, um, Joker 2, like those DC projects, but kind of the separate projects, like obviously those are fine. Um, but the money makers, Supergirl. An upcoming movie that's kind of tied into the DCEU uh, starring Sasha Kelly. That one, according to Rolling Stone, is likely on the chopping block as well. Right. Not confirmed yet, but it's likely not going to happen. Okay, so here's my prediction. Are we ready? <clears throat> okay. All right. So strap in. I think based on everything that they've said in their in their press release just a couple of days ago and also in their initial purchase press release when discovery bought warner brothers Mm -hmm. um they kept coming back to we want to i mean essentially what they're saying is they want to go back to basics they want to focus on their big triple a superheroes etc superman they keep saying superman over and over and over again they say they want to do superman right so whereas old warner brothers was almost kind of trying to do the opposite like ignore all their big biggest players and do lots of little like B-level superhero stuff. So my prediction is we are going to let everything that's kind of been done wrap up. So Mm -hmm. Aquaman 2, The Flash, and that's about it. Um, Black Adam, I guess, and Shazam. Um, And then I'm thinking right around the time most of those have come out, so the end of this year, heading into summer next year, they're going to announce that they're going to completely reboot everything for DC. And they're going to have one big connected universe because they've said in this last release, they want to do it like Marvel. And so I'm thinking they're going to completely wipe away everything else. I don't think we're going to get a Wonder Woman three. I don't think we're going oh, to get any of these. Like, you get what I'm saying? I don't think there's going to be an Aquaman three. I don't think. And. 
everyone like get this is and you can tell me to shut up if this isn't a good segue to anything else but like for example i don't think ben affleck coming back to film was necessarily so much about continuity as they have no intention of using the keaton batman other than yeah. like a cameo in the flash and they're just gonna let it die yeah that's actually gonna be one of my points to talk about is that i kind of think at this point with the flash going through all of the behind the scenes drama that is, I think it's going to be like the legal end. issue. I, I don't even think they're going to release it. You don't think so? I don't think so. And I think, that, I think after all this, they'll release it. I don't know. Like the fact that we're not hearing anything about it, not even at comic con. And the fact that they're okay with removing Keaton's appearances from Aquaman two and, um, obviously well, cause they have zero or, intention of moving. Yeah. They have zero intention of moving forward with that. Yeah. Because they're not going to continue that universe. That's how they were going to try to, quote unquote, fix what was left of the Snyderverse. They have no intention of doing that. That's what I'm saying. They're going to cut all this off as soon as they're done with the current production release. They're going to trim all the little projects that they don't think are going to make much money anyway. So that's why Batgirl died. That's why HBO Max is getting reshuffled. And then they're going to start completely fresh. I guarantee that press release is going to come at the beginning of next year. Uh, So before we move on to what that actually kind of segues into, I want to get Jason's input on possibly not getting the Keaton return that we were hoping for and were promised. Yeah. Cause I know he was hoping for a bad broken heart is, is how I'm feeling. Like it's, I, um, I've become a big fan of Michael Keaton in the last 10, 15 years again, mm-hmm. cause he's, he's just been, I guess, his his career got reinvigorated. I mean, I remember that he was in though in you know in some movies, not a lot, but they didn't they didn't do well. They didn't fare well. Like for example, Desperate, Desperate Measures got like a six point one on IMDb. Corey's right though. I I agree that I think he kind of got that that shot of adrenaline from the other guys, and then he just kind of took off from there again. And I've been happy for him. Um. Probably because he was my Batman, probably. But I like to see, I like that he was doing so well. And I was really looking forward to seeing him return as Batman. And oh well, so here we are. If we don't get the leaked version of this movie ever, um, there were some insiders that were familiar with the cut that was that was put together. And so we actually have a little bit more insight into what the movie was actually going to be. Um, so I have some notes here. Oh, cool. Do share. <laughs> so Michael Keaton actually only had five scenes in Batgirl. He didn't train Barbara. She just dressed up as Batman for a Halloween party, stopped some terrorists, and tweaked the costume to be a superhero. I'm actually just, I'm going to read these this verbatim from what the report said, so it's going to sound kind of choppy. Um, so yeah, Michael Keaton was only in there for five scenes. Uh, Michael Keaton meets Barbara twice in costume, first on the street telling her not to do this, and then in one of those big Tom Burton-y towers where he helps her with something she needs. The last scene in the movie was them teaming up and driving off, uh, a diving off of a gargoyle to fly around Gotham. It seems like Michael Keaton did not have a very big role in this movie at all. He was just kind of there for eye candy. Um, also, everyone kind of forgot that Brandon Fraser was in this movie. He was actually going to be playing one of the bad guys. Uh, he was going to be playing Firefly. Firefly. Um, his backstory was that he was a slower goon for a Gotham mob boss that went straight to support his son's political aspirations. Uh, Firefly got a normal job to try and pay for his sick wife's health care. I kind of forgot that J.K. Simmons was going to be in this movie, uh, returning as Gordon. Um, and everyone said that his appearance was just excellent, as always, as you'd expect from J.K. Simmons. Facts. So it sounds like it was not going to be a huge appearance for Michael Keaton. And the rest of the movie was just going to be kind of like a by the numbers superhero warden story, but I don't know. It would have been nice to see Brandon Frazier get a big role again. I know he yeah, deserves it. There definitely is a fan base that is pushing for his, his Renaissance as well. Yeah. And I can get behind that. Yeah. And it's, mm-hmm. it's just, it sucks that two of the three Michael Keaton upcoming appearances as his return in Batman got canceled within one week of each other. After they were filmed, after they were filmed, he has done the work. Like he, He's done the work. <laughs> That's got to be so frustrating. I mean, just as at his age as an actor to have that this monumental comeback, just building and building and then nothing. That's got to be so frustrating. Yeah. Some further updates. 
Warner Brothers announced that they are laying off 70% of the development staff for HBO Max, which means that they're basically canceling any plans to make scripted TV shows on HBO Max. How does that affect House of the Dragon? That's not an HBO Max show. That is just an HBO show. So HBO uh, Max oh. shows are actually different oh. from the mainline HBO brand and channel. They consider it its own label. So that's actually that's actually important to note, though, because in that same release, they said that a lot of programs would get shuffled back to HBO. Yeah. So things like like um, oh, what was it? Harley Quinn, the cartoon, which I'm a big fan of and season three just came out, is likely to move back to HBO. So a lot of these shows are not necessarily getting canceled, but they are going to be evaluated one at a time to determine whether or not they're going to move to the HBO label or. But with just 70% done. of the development staff being laid off, it likely means that more shows like new shows are not going to be happening anytime soon. Yeah. So, well, you also have to, remember, I also think that that 70%, a huge portion of that is literally the people who run HBO max. Yeah. They're not going to need them anymore. Discovery and HBO max are merging into one app. Discovery has their own people. True. They don't need two sets of people to run one app. That's true. So again, now how much that affects content? I mean, that's going to determine that's going to be determined by the people in charge. But I think a big portion of that seventy percent is literally, hey, we kind of got our own app. We don't need your people. So Warner Brothers held an investor call where they kind of talked about the HBO Max and Discovery Plus merging plans and the fact that they were laying off their HBO Max development staff. But they obviously, after this big news that Batgirl was canceled and obviously the the blowback that they received from that, they wanted to talk about DC specifically. Uh, so the CEO and president of WB Discovery, David Zaslov, was leading this investor call. And I actually have a about one minute long clip I actually want to play here where he directly addressed the plans for DC. So I'm actually going to play that right now. DC is, is one of the top of the list for us. Um, we You look at Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman. Um, these are brands that are known everywhere in the world. And the ability to drive those all over the world with great story is a big opportunity for us. We have done a reset. We've restructured the business where, where we're going to focus, where there will be a team with a 10-year plan focusing just on D.C. It's very similar to the structure that Alan Horn and and Bob Iger put together very effectively with Kevin Feige at uh, Disney. We think that we could build a, a long-term, much stronger, sustainable growth business out of D.C. And as part of that, we're going to focus on quality. We're not going to release any film before it's ready. We're not going to release a film to make a quarter. We're not going to release a film under – the focus is going to be how do we make each of these films in general as good as possible – but DC is something that we think we could make better, and we're focused on it now. All right, so that was his his pretty short statement on DC, but it was there was a lot to digest there. Basically, he says they're going to be copying MCU's, Marvel's, Disney's, Kevin Feige's proven plan for building a universe around his his characters. Thank God, because <sighs> that's been the biggest issue for WB the whole time. Yeah. Was as soon as they decided they weren't really going to do the Zack Snyder thing, everyone was just kind of, yeah, just do your own thing, bro. We'll throw in like one scene to try to make it feel like it's part of a, a who's he, what's it. So, no, I'm for it. Like, I'm at that point. This has gotten so bad and so terrible and is such a dumpster fire. If we can just completely start over, I'm okay with it. You know, the, the tragedy though is that they've had probably the best actors cast in the roles and it was completely wasted. I mean, some of the movies ended up being pretty good. We've discussed this, like man of steel was good. Um, you know, I would say the, the Batman Superman movie was pretty, was mostly good. Wonder woman was great. They, they, I, but it wasn't even the quality of the movie. The quality of the actors was, was spot on yeah. and they wasted all those now. So my thing about this is that it, it sounds good. And like, obviously, I don't, I don't know if he said it in his quote, but 
you know, they're they're building a dedicated team around making this this 10 year plan and building this universe around these DC characters. It's yeah. so like they're dedicating to it. And that makes it sound like they're going to build a high quality product. However, there's something important to remember. And that when the MCU started back all the way in Iron Man one, there wasn't a plan for a big, huge universe like the whole Nick Fury showing up and the end credits, which is kind of like a little Easter egg. Like it wasn't really planning to build to anything huge like it is today. Same thing with the Conjuring universe of all those horror movies. If you think about all of the cinematic universes that went into it, wanting a cinematic universe have not worked out specifically the. Uh, Oh, what was it called? The Dark Universe Cinematic Universe that was supposed to be kickstarted by Tom Cruise's 2017 The Mummy movie. Right. And that movie or that universe went literally nowhere. <laughs> like they announced all these big actors that were going to be playing all these iconic roles like Frankenstein and stuff. And it got canceled. Yeah, it got canceled because The Mummy bombed. They weren't going to build a universe on a failure. The whole reason it was easy to build into a universe for the MCU, even though there wasn't a plan, is because the first two or three movies they released did make a ton of money. They were successful. From a business standpoint, it was worth investing in the idea of bringing all these movies together. So what the happens if... The opposite was true. So what happens if they go all in for this DC universe, but yet again, the first movie of this universe sucks? One of the things, or a few of the things that were important ingredients for Iron Man is that you had a dedicated director, a dedicated team. You had people who were emotionally and mentally invested in the success of that, of that movie. Mm -hmm. And you'll need those same type of people involved. It's not good. You could have the, probably even the best script, the best actors, but if you don't have a production team and a directing team, that are on board and committed and an actor and an actor in the role that, you know, that you need to fill, it's not going to work. And so I think that they really need to focus on their talent in these roles. And as long as they do that, I think they're halfway to 75% there. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you said that because with what one of the brothers did here by canceling these near finished movies, like multiple movies, it wasn't just Batgirl. It was also the sequel to Scoob. But they also canceled several other things. They actually canceled the upcoming third season for Little Ellen, which was literally complete. Like they, they've actually come out and said it was a completed third season ready to release and they've canceled it. Hmm. So that you have to wonder, does this hurt Warner Brothers relationship with booking new talent and creatives? If there's always going to be that cloud overhanging them saying, but what if this project gets canceled? Like, why would I sign on to this project right. if there's a potential for it to get canceled? And so let's actually tap into that real quick. Okay. So the producer and writer of the upcoming, well, I say upcoming, the canceled Scoob movie now, the producer came out and said, uh, his name is Tony Cervone. He came out and said, and I quote, the movie is practically finished and turned out beautifully. I am beyond heartbroken. Hmm. The directors of Batgirl, who were actually the directors of uh, Miss Marvel for the MCU. So they just got off of having this pretty highly successful project. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to pronounce the names, but I apologize if I do this incorrectly. Adil L. Arby and Bilal Fala. Sorry, that's a mouthful. Um, I feel like you killed it. You they great. found out that their movie was canceled while they were in Morocco for Adil's wedding. Oh, they wow. had no heads up that their project was canceled. And so while they were at their wedding, they heard through the Hollywood Reporter, like the Warren Brothers not even called them telling them this. They had to read it through the news that their project was canceled. And the directors came out and said, and I quote, We are saddened and shocked by the news. We still can't believe it. As directors, it is critical that our work be shown to audiences. And while the film was far from finished, we wish that fans all over the world would have had the opportunity to see and embrace the final film themselves. Maybe one day they will. And Ashala. 
Our amazing cast and crew did a tremendous job and worked so hard to bring Batgirl to life. We are forever grateful to have been a part of that team. It was a dream to work with such fantastic actors like Michael Keaton, J.K. Simmons, Brendan Fraser, Jacob Scipio, Corey Johnson, Rebecca Front, and especially the great Leslie Grace, who portrayed Batgirl with so much passion, dedication, and humanity. In any case, as huge fans of Batman, since we were little kids, it was a privilege and an honor to have been a part of the DCEU, even if it was for a brief moment, Batgirl for life. Mm. So all these people that were involved with these projects, obviously devastated they don't get to show off their work to the world. But also, one of the brothers didn't even tell them ahead of time that this was happening. They had to find out through the news. Why would anyone want to work with Warner Brothers going forward? How did the news find out? Was it leaked? It was first reported by The Wrap. Which they get most of their stuff from insiders, industry insiders. Yeah. yeah. So that's worth noting. Like, Warner Brothers didn't announce that it was canceled. Someone who probably wasn't supposed to say anything said something. If I was in charge of breaking the news to them, hey, I'm going to let them go have their happy day at the wedding. When they get back, we'll talk about it. So some asshole leaked a story that ruined someone else's day. That's not Warner Brothers Discovery's fault. But even then, even taking that part out of it, they still canceled these projects that were near completion. Mm -hmm. I mean, that sucks. It's business. Yeah, it sounds callous, and it is. And it's because... You know me. I'm the biggest DC guy ever. Like, Marvel is fun and everything, but DC has my heart. And this has been a progressively worsening dumpster fire that at this point, eh, I think we're trying to turn Warner Brothers into evil people here. I think this is an opportunity for a fresh start. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole business side of everything. So obviously, industry shaking things. Sad that we're not going to be getting these things that we were promised, especially because they were so close to being done. Let's talk about just speculation for what this actually means for the current slate of movies. So obviously the things mm -hmm. that are coming up soon, like Shazam 2 and Aquaman 2, uh, The Flash. Um, but also what this means for like backflex reappearances uh, and so on. But also future DC movies and stuff. So what are we thinking is going to be the path forward for Shazam 2 and Aquaman 2? Like, are they going to be shaping the end to the current DCEU as we know it? And that's why they're, like, doing reshoots and, like, bringing Ben, ben Affleck back in? I think Or so. is it going to be kind of, like, yeah. segueing into the new phase of stuff? No. I think no. at this point, they're going to they're gonna play it. Say this, everything you see over the next year is going to be about wrapping things up. Like, giving as much closure as you possibly can to this tangled mess of doo-doo. <laughs> tangled mess of doo-doo. Yes. Now, I did have an interesting thought when you mentioned how the MCU started with a movie that wasn't supposed to be part of a shared universe. Mm -hmm. What if, stay with me here, what if oh God. <laughs> they spin the new DC universe off of the Batman? I was thinking that too. Like, this is actually the perfect opportunity to use something that already exists and just build on it. And and Battenson was not bad. No, it's a fine, it was a good movie. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, and, and he, He's in, you could, in a messed up way, you could get the arc that we were kind of promised for Affleck's Batman, but they kind of had to rush through it where you can start off with a Batman who's very shut down and locked away and emotionally unavailable and kind of see him grow into someone who would be part of a team. And so, like I said, they kind of had to smash all that together because they weren't keeping Snyder. But the point is, the Batman is in a place where he could go through that same transformation. He even already started it by accepting Alfred more thoroughly within his own movie. And like, that has to be what they're doing, right? Like, that's what makes the most sense, right? Like, they're not going to yeah. keep that, that franchise going and then start another new franchise of Batman at the same time, but that. also ending this one. Like, yeah, what, they have what to it, use the money. You know, I don't know what it sounds like to me is they're they're going to let a few of these DC movies continue, have them hit the theaters, yeah. let them finish up, and then they're going to take a break while they re, while they regroup and revamp. And I really think um, it's going to be a fresh start for everything. Yeah, I think that what they're going to do is they're going to distance themselves by time from this this mess. Of what of WB and, and DC, and they're going to distance themselves, and like maybe give it a year, 
or so. It could be two. And then during those two years, they're going to be working on um, milestones, benchmarks, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're going to set up whatever their universe is going to be. And then we're going to hear something by the end of 2023, 2024, beginning of 2024, where things are going to start uh, gearing up again. I think that's what we're going to, what's going to happen. Yeah. So realistically, first movies in their new 10 year plan, probably 2025, 2026. Yeah. Probably. You think that, that probably checks out? That's, that's what my guess is. But also, isn't that when the Batman 2 and Joker are scheduled? Like they're not scheduled until 2024, 2025, right? So they could, they could still be the start of it. <laughs> they could be. They, I mean, it could be, but I think they're, I think what they are doing is they're going to create a temporal distance from, uh, the DC WB right now. Right. The, the sunken remains of the Snyderverse. And I mean, they really haven't started doing anything with the Batman 2. Or Joker That's what I'm saying, two, dude. Other it could than be, be revamped to yeah. to start introducing other. I mean, the Joker will always be its own standalone thing. People keep trying to force that into other things. Leave it alone. It's, it's whole, also it's the whole it's reason also, that movie what, worked. Twenty years prior to Batman. Yeah, it's in the 80s. Batman or twenty or thirty years prior to the Batman. So, oh, that's true. That. He did. He did meet little Bruce Wayne, didn't he? In the yeah, first yeah, movie, it he is. Did. It is firmly in the eighties. Leave I it alone. That. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so people people keep trying. Is he going to meet up with his? No, he is not. <laughs> that is its own thing. Arthur Fleck was already kind of pushing health issues and age in the Joker. Yeah, he he's was... not going to be around for when Batman grows up. <laughs> yeah, like Joaquin Phoenix did amazing. Like, yeah, I'm not I'm not going to take anything away from that. But he was he was too old to be the Joker. That's that's end of career for Joker. Yeah, well, for anyone, he's in. Oh yeah, he he's was, pushing yeah, he's sixty. Kind of, yeah, 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 sure. So I don't, eh, I don't know. I don't know. But it was good though. That's but it just needs to be its own thing. People need to quit trying to squeeze that into others. But the Batman two though could be the start. The Batman two though. Batman two. It has in. potential. I, and, I will agree with you on that. And looking back at some of um Matt Reeves, so like he even said right after I remember reading when the when the Batman first came out, people were asking, so like, are there other superheroes in this universe? Everything and his exact response. I'm paraphrasing. His, it's exact, but I'm paraphrasing. Um, <laughs> his his response was basically, "I don't have anything planned, but that's really not up to me." So I wonder if they were mm. already talking to him about leaving room for this to be a possibility. Hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Again, again, I'm I I do feel just a little bit of heartache for what could have been with DC. Well, I, yeah. I really. Yeah, yeah, we I mean, all do. Yeah. I mean, just like you were saying, you know, you've seen Josh, just like you were saying, you know, this is DC and Warner Brothers has been getting progressively worse and worse and worse over the years. They just, it's like they, they are, go, they are rudderless. And it's an example of having money and not knowing how to use it correctly. <laughs> yes. Um, and it, all I saw is just a series of wasted opportunities at this point. It's because it's and all it was. Right. And whereas I'm I'm sad to see that, you know, Henry Cavill will probably not be back as Superman. Yeah, I think we Ben Affleck won't be back as Batman in any yeah. real capacity. Yeah, I think uh I think we need to yeah. accept I it. think we need to put in stone right here the Snyder yeah. cut, the Snyder verse is dead. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I do think we need to just acknowledge Superman is Henry Cavill is not gonna be Superman anymore. And that's sad. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I think what's what upsets me the most is just that if Batgirl had been canceled before it started filming, okay, whatever, that's fine. Even after they announced that Michael Keaton would have returned, if they had canceled it then, but then not filmed anything, that's that's fine. But like the fact that it was filmed, reshot, they had a they had an initial director's cut of it for test screening. It was months away from being released, and then they cancel it. That's yeah. that's the heartbreaking part for me. You are absolutely correct on that too. That is that is tragic. Like somewhere out there, there is a cut of this movie that we are yeah. never allowed to see. Very valid point. A one hundred million dollar movie with the return of Michael Keaton. Are you trying to make Jason cry? A little bit. It's- <laughs> <laughs> Do, 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 do. 
<laughs> so continuing <laughs> continuing our DC coverage, but over in the TV sphere, we're confirming that Josh was right. The Flash there it is. The Flash is ending with a 13 episode season nine. So we're going to start this new segment out with our new mini segment. Hashtag Josh was right. So Hashtag Flash <laughs> uh, all the way back on our podcast episode number four and five. Josh predicted that the Arrowverse was coming to an end and that the Flash will be getting a final season in a shortened season. And it is confirmed. CW has announced that the Flash will end with season 19 or season nine with 13 episodes starting in 2023. We're on a uh, we're on episode what of our podcast now? Uh, 18. Suck it, nerds. <laughs> Predicted that a dozen episodes ago. All the way back in April. Yep. Um, yep. So a little fun thing. So math. The finale of the Flash TV series is going to air just weeks before the Flash movie debuts in June of next year. It's scheduled to debut. Yeah, <laughs> let's be clear about that. <laughs> the film was originally announced just a week after the Flash TV series premiered on the CW in 2013. Whoa. Say that one more time. <laughs> the Flash film that comes out next June was originally announced a week before the Flash TV series premiered on the CW all the way back in 2013. The Flash TV series has had nine full seasons of TV shows since the Flash movie was announced and still has not aired <laughs> or debuted. This movie has been in development for 10 years. You know what? It's a, a little wordplay here. A little wordplay here. Is it aired? A-I-R-E-D? Or aired? E-R-R-E-D? In this particular both. case, either of us. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's wild. Yeah. But yeah, that checks out. Yeah. God. Mm. Anyway. Because, yeah, it was announced when Batman versus Superman was in production mm -hmm. because that's when all the characters were introduced. And that was 10 years ago. Yep. That is wild. I feel like after a few seasons of the TV show, they should have just given up on the movie and let the Flash live in CW. <laughs> Oh, retrospect. Of course, a lot of people would argue the Flash should not have gone on for nine seasons. So, yeah, true. And that that um, iteration of the Flash is, was pretty good. Yeah, very well received. A lot of people say best Flash. Yeah. Yeah, especially the first few seasons. Oh, yeah. The first like three seasons. Awesome. I still think it actually peaked in season one. But they also started with the best villain. Like they started with reverse Flash. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this is my nerd moment. But yeah, hashtag Josh was right. T-shirts are available on the website. You can pick your color and your size. So yes, in our spreadsheet of predictions, Josh, you're getting another little green box saying that you predicted something correctly. And your turnaround time was just fantastic. Like you'll predict something, then like a month later, it's confirmed. So good job. But anyway, yep. so that was our hashtag Josh is right segment. Moving on to our next story. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't wait to hear the music. Oh, no, right. I'm sorry. Um, all right. I want to get some speculation on this one. So the official synopsis for Marvel Studios Secret Invasion TV series, which is the one uh, starring Nick Fury um, doing super scroll excited. stuff. Um, yeah. So an official synopsis has come out that makes it a little bit intriguing. It reads, and I quote, Secret Invasion is a newly announced series heading to Disney Plus that stars Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury and Ben Middleson. Uh, as Skrull Talus, characters who first met in Captain Marvel, the crossover event series so showcases a faction of shape-shifting scrolls who have been infiltrating Earth for years. So emphasis on the crossover event series, hmm. part of that quote. What are we crossing over with here, guys? Well, it's the scrolls, so it could be anyone. Like this, this, this show, if they do it right, should be a cornucopia of cameos. So that's the thing. Like they've never really used the whole crossover events. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Well, so because, because Avengers, the first Avengers movie was a crossover movie. Honestly. Correct. Yes. It is worth noting that right after Feige announced the, all the stuff at Comic-Con, he was doing an interview and when they asked why it was going to be such a long time before we got new Avengers movies, 
his reply was that the way these things are structured is that there's going to be lots of crossover projects before you ever get to the Avengers. Yeah. So whereas the Avengers movies used to be the crossover movies, now you're going to see crossovers all the time. And the Avengers ones are where everyone has to come help. So Interesting. So this, I think in this particular case, they're referring to anyone can come back because it's the scrolls. That's what I, that's how I read it. But moving forward, the plan seems to be that you're going to see lots of team ups and that it's rarely going to be just one person, even if it's their show doing stuff. I'm kind of thinking, I mean, yes, I totally agree with that. More specifically, I'm thinking that Secret Invasion is going to be kind of like the big buildup of all the D- Disney Plus like street level shows we've been getting so far. It's so, like I'm kind of thinking it's mm. going to be kind of like the culmination of like Hawkeye reappearing, kind of tying in all those Captain America reappearing, like all of those like street level people coming together for this this series. It would be kind of cool. You know, maybe this will be another way that they can start introducing a lot of minor characters as well that we haven't seen yet or um, and introduce them at this level so that when we do get the Avenger movies, they're not misplaced. We're just kind of seem out of just, you know, out from left field or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're going to see a lot of characters that we're familiar with, but we're going to start seeing some characters that we haven't seen yet. All right. So moving into our next story, actually kind of tying into that. So we have gotten a tease for Moon Knight <gasps> season two <gasps> on TikTok. Oscar Isaac made a surprise appearance in someone's TikTok saying that they were in Cairo. And he was just like, <gasps> hmm, why else would we be here? So is he just like having some fun or is he actually there to film Moon Knight season two? Because originally Moon Knight was a limited series. But now it's not. But we also heavily speculated that there would be a season two. So is this like a... There has to be a Stephen two. A Stephen two. two. <laughs> there has to be a And Stephen. a Stephen three and Stephen. four. And... Well, I'm sorry. Oscar Isaac, Stephen, you know, it yeah. just blend it all together. Uh, but yeah. A- and they're filming on location, which that's kind of cool. If they continue with their, their Egypt storyline. Yeah, it'd be cool. Anyway, that's just a little fun thing. So yeah. moving into yeah. our next story. Our speculation from a few episodes ago that Lady Gaga was rumored to be appearing uh, right. and the Joker too has been confirmed. Lady Gaga herself uh, posted a little teaser video on Twitter where it confirmed that she will be starring alongside Joaquin Phoenix in the Joker fully audio Joker two sequel coming out in 2024. And the style of the video that I'll sh- share in the show notes uh, kind of teases it as a musical. Like it's a very musical video so it kind of seems like all those reports about how lady gaga will be starring in a musical sequel to the joker are true it's uh it's redubbed as joker face my my, my (laughs) joker face my my joker face oh my god there's multiple puns in one i love it um but it's also been uh reported on that the majority of the movie will actually take place in arkham asylum that's where I want all my romantic rom-com musicals to take place. <laughs> Insane asylums. <laughs> all right, gentlemen, that is it for episode 18. Any final thoughts? For the love of all that's holy, share this freaking podcast with all of your friends. <laughs> I wish the audience could see your face when you were saying that. It was, <laughs> it was very dramatic. <laughs> well, I felt very strongly about what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> seriously like everybody that we've talked to have, that has listened to this says it's professional it's well made we even have business cards right we now have business cards with a qr code that you can just right. scan jason will be coming by your door soon to give you one right. yes wherever you <laughs> live i'll be at your door that's <laughs> terrifying as i'm saying it, i'm like that's i'm terrifying jason don't say that but i said it and there we are so <laughs> uh. Yes, so go if you liked this episode, tell one person. Right. Just just one. If you want to tell more, that's cool. But just one person. No, I like Josh. I like Josh's idea of tell two people. (laughs) Tell three. I don't And each person needs to tell two people. Like you have to tell each of those two people that they have to tell two people. Or they're not really your friends. (laughs) Friends. We'll even take the sympathy downloads, like, oh yeah, I'll download this podcast. Just just click on it. That's fine. No. That's fine. Yeah. We, I mean, no, whatever. we want you guys yeah. to listen to it. 
We want, we want, we want this to be like a phenomenon, a phenomenon, a f- <laughs> phenomenal, uh, phenomenal. Why don't we, why don't we go ahead and bring it home? <laughs> Take us home, Jason, from that satellite that you're calling us. To see the world, things dangerous to come to, to see behind walls, draw closer, to find each other, and to feel. That is the purpose of life. Take it easy, people. <laughs> <laughs>